Okay. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Waverly Alkir. I'm the Community Outreach and Social Media Coordinator for the Samson Lab for Community Genomics. And today I'm joined here by Montrez Lucas, who's the Associate Director of Patient Navigation at NAPCURE. Thank you so much for joining us, Montrez. Do you want to start by telling me a little bit about yourself and what you do at NAPCURE? Thank you, Waverly. That's a loaded question. Um, thank you for having me. So um, in particular, what I do at NAPCURE um, as the Associate Director of Patient Navigation, what, the main issue I try to work on is connecting our patients, um, our rare kidney disease patients, as, as you're familiar with, um, different resources, whether that be financial, um, genetic testing. I advocate for them in the school systems to ensure they have accommodations they need to be successful, mental health resources. Also, um, second opinions with our great nephew specialist um, and various other resources. It's a program that's building out constantly based on the need. And so that's been really cool. A new problem means a new resource. So I really enjoy new problems. Um, and it's been really great. And all of this is, is an attempt and also our efforts to basically empower and activate the rare kidney disease patient to ensure that they have um, not only what they need, but also that they feel empowered to really, really advocate for themselves, not only in doctor's appointments, but within healthcare environments in general and to ensure their needs are met. So that's been my main synopsis, main overarching um, thing at NEPCURE. But uh, for myself, I've been a social worker. Um, it's also I've been therapy the past over a decade. I went to Florida State University where I got my grad degree in clinical social work. And from there, I've done hospice to dialysis to working with kids with autism to working with the homeless. And most recently, I was the manager of social work for Emory Healthcare, two of their hospitals here in Atlanta. So it's been crazy, but it's been fun. I love it. I love NEFCARE. I love what we're doing. I love how passionate we are about it and how much we really are um, centering the patient day in, day out. So it's been an incredible journey so far since October. It's been amazing. Yeah, it, it sounds like a great journey. And NEFCARE is so, and the whole patient navigation program is so people, patient focus, really focusing on them, what their needs are, how do we meet the, them where they are? Um, and I know you touched upon this a little bit, but do you want to talk a little bit more about what is the patient navigation program? Sure. So the program in its entirety, it's basically from intake, if you think about from intake to, I think about it as like intake to advocacy. So you're really, you're intaking a patient who is oftentimes vulnerable, um, not that much information regarding the rare kidney disease, even though some of them may have nephrologists. A lot of people in general, that's why they're so rare. A lot of people are not knowledgeable when it comes to best treatment options, um, as well as how to speak to these patients that are in such a vulnerable situation. And so taking that patient from intake and really pairing with them, building rapport with them from the very beginning and really working to um, meet them where they are. I think what you just said, that's such a great, that's just a social work phrase, by the way. That's definitely grad school 101. Um, but meeting them day one where they are and really, really allowing them to be the driver and me be the passenger and trying to reach their healthcare goals, sometimes their financial goals, um, fighting with their insurance companies for them to ensure the insurance company meets their unique needs. Because a lot of insurance companies aren't extremely sensitive to rare kidney disease just because a lot of them don't have no knowledge about them. Um, and a lot of them, um, unfortunately, have not taken them into great consideration when it comes to covering rare kidney disease patients. And so creating um, a set of goals with them and for them, and then moving through this journey that allows them to get um, better access to the healthcare, whether that be medications um, through insurance, or access to better doctors, whether that be nephrologists specialists or nephrologists in general that are familiar and specialized in their diagnoses, um, or that be assistance within our community. That's connected them to our great support groups that we have that are monthly and connecting our patients, connecting different patients with those support groups really gives them a sense of community. They get to meet different patients with the same disease from different backgrounds all over the country, sometimes the world, and that has been very valuable as well. And hopefully, um, as we get them empowered, we're able to have them join our advocacy um, 
part of our organization. So they can really, really help other patients that are in the same situations they are in. So from intake to advocacy, that's how I think of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think that's a great way of putting it. It's really comprehensive um, of not only empowering um, the patients and their families, mm -hmm. but also leading them into that advocacy. So they're supporting themselves and others in the community, which is really great. It is. It's been great to see. It's been amazing to see some people start so vulnerable and then our patient summit in San Diego this year, it was really cool to see some of the parents that um, really came to us in these very difficult situations speak to other parents about not only what NEFCARE does, but also give them hope, give them real hope. It, it's it's great to hear from a social worker or a healthcare professional like you or myself, but when you hear it from another patient that has kind of traveled this a similar journey, that it's, I think it's the biggest strength of NEFCARE. We're, we connect those people. So that's what, I think that's our biggest most successful initiative right now. That's great. Yeah, it's really people connecting people. And Michelle, a, a computational biologist at our lab, actually attended the patient summit. And I know when she came back, she was telling me about everyone that she met and even the patients and their families who had started their own nonprofits and programs to advocate yes. and, and lead and, and help others in the community is just really inspirational. It is. We had one called LC Reno Alliance, and with, it's a mother and father of a, of a little girl with um, FSGS, and they went from being those people who did not know what to do and were kind of bewildered by the diagnosis to now being leaders in a rapid disease community. And what they've been able to do as far as give direct patient grants to different families who are going through financial hardships because of rapid disease and because of different things like insurance and, not, and being underemployed has been incredible. So yeah, Michelle's exactly right. We have those people that are now in our NEFCA family as well. We lean on to help us with other patients. Yeah, it's it's really great to see. And it's great to what NEFCA is doing. And I'm sure it'll only continue to grow. Yeah, it will. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our next question is, why was the patient navigation program created? And how did you become interested in supporting um, people affected by rare kidney disease? Oh, wow. That's a good question. That's so good, by the way. Um, it was, uh, because NEFCARE is a patient advocacy organization, it seemed like a natural next step, I'm sure, for for our leadership team and our executive team. It seemed probably like a very, it, a natural next moment for us to have a patient navigation program that really centered around seeing that patient from beginning to hopefully one day cure or one day um, remission um, that's sustained. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's very natural to what NEFCARE has been doing um, for the last 20 or so years. And that is really centering every approach they have around the patient and um, putting the patient first. So having a, an actual program that legitimately is about navigating the, not only the hardships, but also hopefully um, meeting some successes when diagnosis of acute disease seems extremely natural for what NEFCAR is doing and right on par. So yeah, that 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 I think um, was meant to be. Um, but when it comes to me wanting to work with acute disease patients, when I started out as a social worker after grad school, I, my first job was I was a dialysis social worker, nephrology social worker, and I saw almost three hundred patients weekly be dialyzed and I was their social worker. Um, and I found various resources from them from financial to insurance to getting their roofing fixed sometimes to doing support groups for them, finding different programs that could really service them. Um, but what I didn't see is something that prevented them from being on dialysis. A lot of nephrology patients are unfortunately placed in situations where they're diagnosed and then a lot of times the healthcare world oftentimes doesn't know what to do with them and is waiting on them to be on dialysis. That it was very difficult to watch them be dialyzed every day, as you probably could imagine. Um, far more difficult for them to actually withstand it. So when seeing what NEFCARE was doing and NEFCARE's mission to really try to prevent people from getting to that state um, really, really intrigued me. And it's nice to be on the side of trying to prevent 
that from being the only course of action. Sometimes it's inevitable. Sometimes you need dialysis, whether you are um, given all the options you can just because of the luck chance and how life works out. But to think that we're preventing some patients from experiencing that and that being the only answer as far as treatment goes is extremely inspirational and very important to me as someone who started out in dialysis to now be at a space where I'm helping people um, not only hopefully hopefully find out that that's not their only option, but also kind of intervene before that does become their only option. So that's that's been exciting. And Nefkira, I think, is leading the way with that, but I could be biased. <laughs> I definitely, uh, what you said rings true. I think being preventative and proactive, and I, I think Nefkira is definitely a leader in the space and advocating for that, and that it's not something that should we should be addressing when they're already on dialysis. It's something that we can kind of work on beforehand. And yet, like you said, yes, dialysis may be um, what they have is. to take. But yeah. if it's not, we just want to know that we did everything in our control to prevent it. Yeah, I completely agree. And I love that Nef is committed to that and, and us really trying to involve ourselves in different spaces to ensure that we're giving treatment options and we're, we're connecting patients with treatment options that are not only dialysis. Like you like you emphasized, it sometimes is the only choice and sometimes it's temporary. Sometimes it's not a, a long-term sentence. However, oftentimes if, if that becomes the option because of patients not having other treatment options presented to them, um, it's really sad as you can imagine. Yeah, I, I can imagine it being really difficult. And I think it all bring, brings back to, I can think, kind of similar messages that that you've been saying is like equitable access to, to health care and treatment options and these resources that the patient navigation program does bring to patient, to people. And not being left behind because you don't have a well-known diagnosis. I think that's a big part of it as well. I love that NEFCURE is giving... Um, is giving patients like that such a voice that can't be ignored. I mean, and, and I don't think that it's a conscious decision of the healthcare field or people in general healthcare. Uh, I like to hope that people join um, not only healthcare, but they also join um, nonprofit um, for very pure reasons. However, oftentimes because patients have rare diseases in general, not just kidney disease, sometimes their voices aren't heard. And so that NEFCARE is giving those patients voices through programs like patient navigation through advocacy, through volunteer engagement and community engagement, um, through legislation is amazing. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's so true. It's it's rare diseases and rare disease day does a great job of, of bringing that to light as well um, and just really giving people a voice because um, it's not that people don't care. They just may not know. There's just a lack know. of awareness. Yeah. Yeah, you're so right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know you touched upon this a little already, but do you want to talk more about um, how these resources help the rare kidney disease community? Well, I like to think they're helping um, a lot, like really. Um, but but I think they I think um, various resources like the financial assistance that we um, that I try to connect patients with. A lot of times when they're diagnosed, um, we have we have young we have young patients that are diagnosed with things like FSGS or again, and then they can't work. Um, or we have teenagers and, and kids diagnosed and then if their parents can't work. And so it does become financially difficult. The hope is that through handing them financial resources, through linking them with financial resources and empowering them in that way that they can then focus just on a diagnosis as opposed to having to focus on how they're gonna pay their mortgage, how they're gonna pay co-pays, how they're gonna pay for medications that are necessary for them to um, live and, and also survive. So my hope has been, and my work has been that those kind of things, we in the patient navigation program and handling resources allows them to no longer have to think about and focus merely on their diagnosis. Because that's what you don't, to be sick, to be chronically ill and to be critically ill, and to be in a vulnerable situation, have to think about how you're gonna pay your mortgage as well, I think is extremely unfair and almost impossible. Um, oftentimes, if a patient has to think about how they're going to pay utilities, 
they're not so concerned with entering clinical trials. They're not so concerned with doctor's appointments and following up. And you can't blame them. I mean, that's a need for them that's immediate. Um, and so sometimes the focus can be shifted. If we're able to take care of those things for them, if we're able to help them by empowering them, by connecting with various organizations such as LC Renew Alliance or the AKF or NKF or NORD, and, and really help fill in the gap for them so that when it comes time for them to focus on their health, they can do just that and only that. For us through our 504 plan, doing 504 plans for um, different kids it has been a great, great, great work and, and far more impactful than I thought it could be because if you know your child's being accommodated during school and their needs are being met while they're in school, then you can focus on other things that really affect them more long-term like their health. So really trying to fill in the gap of those deficiencies so that they can really focus on what's important, either their health or their loved one's health, I think it's been a great goal that I like to think is being reached through the patient navigation program. Yeah, I think the the two things that you said really resonated with me in, in terms of filling in that gap and also mm -hmm. kind of alleviating those stressors so they can focus on things that are most important and focusing in on their health. Really stand yeah. out to that. Yeah, and insurance sucks. So having them not have to worry about insurance sometimes and really advocating with them when it comes to insurance has been a big deal as well. I mean, to have a family having to fight back and forth with insurance company, go through appeals, go through authorizations for medications and procedures that their children need. I mean, that's very recent. I, that, that's just a few days ago that, that this is an incident that just happened with the family. To be able to alleviate them of that stress so they can just worry about their child being in the hospital and be with their child in the hospital. Um, I think it like makes life a, a bit more fair in that way. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I, I think it does. And it's it's so hard, those situations, especially because it takes up so much time and energy. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they they want to just be spending time with their, their child who's in the hospital, not really kind of fighting back and forth with insurance. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. So... That us being able to do that um, through this program and, and myself, um, to be honest, has been extremely rewarding and validating in knowing that at least they can focus on what's important and they're not being distracted by things that are just systematic and there are um, side effects basically of them being diagnosed, whether that be financial or, or mental health wise or um, academic. Um, I think is extremely validating for us at NetCure. Yeah, I think so too. And kind of going off of that, what would you say is a major challenge faced by people in the rare kidney disease community and how is NetCure working to address that? Mm. That's great. Um, one thing that I think is extremely um challenging, maybe not the most, but what, I, what I've seen quite often is that rare acute disease definitely isolates you sometimes, you know, not only because it's rarity, but also because a lot of our patients don't look sick sometimes. They're not oncology patients. Um, and so oftentimes they don't get the same consideration as well as some of the, um, some of the same thought and consideration that some other patients do with more obvious diagnoses. Granted, those patients definitely deserve um, their advocacy and their space and, and also deserve representation. But oftentimes, our patients aren't given the same opportunity when it comes to representation or advocacy or um, equal footing when it comes to healthcare. And so, NEFCURE really making the community itself feel stronger by connecting all these different people with one another doing things like patient summits, um, having a very great extensive list of NEFCURE specialists that are some even international has been amazing. It, Like I said before, it gives a voice to those patients because oftentimes those patients' voices don't go heard. And so really, really giving them a voice and representation has been a big deal. Showing up um, at different conferences and, and us showing up things for things like Heal Day um, currently has really, really allowed 
us to really give a voice to the unheard that is the rare kidney disease patient. So that I think is the biggest challenge, but I think that we are remedying that by some of the ways I just said in countless other ways through um, connecting patients with clinical trials from doing that to also having patient stories get out there for the community to hear, uh, connecting with organizations such as North and let them know that, hey, we exist and we need help and our patients matter. Um, as well as really teaching nephrologists that we encounter, um, not only through our nephrology specialists, but in the nephrology world in general about rare acute disease through connecting with our nephrology specialists and connecting with our different educational resources has been extremely um, important and extremely necessary when it comes to giving our patients voices and representation. Yeah, I think NEFCARE does a really great job of connecting not only patients, but like you said, kind of the industry or, or healthcare and nephrologists and people aren't just located in one spot in, in the USA. We're all over the world, all over the globe. And being able to, I think, connect digitally is also such a powerful tool as well. So our- I agree. I have a car beeping in okay. my car, but I agree with you completely. I definitely agree. No worries about the car. Um, and our next question is, where can someone learn more and inquire about the patient navigation program? On our site, I mean, which is, I think, a very basic answer, but it's true. Um, and our site is being redone currently. Um, and in the staff bio they have with me, but also the, the patient navigation um, tab on our website, patient connections and the patient connections, is it's very, it's very thorough. It gives a really good idea of not only what we do, but also what um, patient navigation in general, um, that whole program, what, what I'm really doing to really try to not only build it out, but also to service patients in various ways. Also, you can always email me. You can share my email, by the way. Um, always emailing me. I'm very accessible, easy to contact, and I don't mind um, going over various things. Like I said, a new problem gives birth to a new resource, so new problems really excite us. And so that's really, I, I'm more than fine with coming about things that I've never seen before, never heard of, just because it really does empower not only NEFCARE, but also our patients that could be easily affected by the same circumstances. Yeah, that's great. I'll, I'll be sure to include your email and, and the link to um, the website for, for people to access. Um, okay. So our last thing to leave off on is, do you have a quote or a mantra that you live by? And is there a reason why it, it rings true to you? Oh, wow. You're like Diane Sawyer. <laughs> That's intense. Um, you know, one that I think rings so true recently is that too much is given, much is required. I've been afforded a great deal, even through misfortune. And because of what I've been given, I really think that even far more is required of me. Um, I've been given great opportunities, great chances. Um, I've been redeemed and, um, forgiven and when vulnerable, then made whole again by people around me, whether that be professional or personally. And so I really think that when you are given a, a countless amount of not only opportunities, but chances and access and 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 so much, so mercifully and so 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 humbly, you have to then of course give that back in any way possible and intentionally give it back, not just do um, blanket efforts, but really, really charge yourself with the responsibility of really being intentional about how you give back to others and empower others because so much is important to you. So yeah, too much is given, much is required. And it's really led me through not only social work, but um, through life in general. Yeah, I, I really like that, that mantra. I think that that's something that kind of, I would say, influenced like why I decided to become a part of the Samson lab and and do yeah. what I do to really 
give back to the community and, and support people um, through advocacy, education. And I think I think I speak for myself and the, my peers in, in our lab and, and you, of course, when we, we feel the same way. Yeah, I think a lot of us do this um, kind of work for, for that reason. We definitely feel as though either we've been given something that we didn't deserve at certain times or someone has looked out for us when we fail to look out for ourselves. Um, that definitely, I think, is a motivating force behind this type of work, whether it be patient navigation or, or what you do or what DES does or, or what NEFCURE is doing as a whole or the Samson Lab as a whole. I think we all are doing it because of reasons like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's the power of purpose and kind of social impact and giving back to people. So true. So true. So completely true. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's all the questions that I have for today. Um, well, thank you so much, Montrez, for joining me. And we'll be sure to um, put the recording for people to access. And if they have follow-up questions, they'll be able to um, reach you via email or visit the website. But this is really great. I'm so glad we were able to do this. Thank you so much, Waverly. Thank you.